In this video, we'll cover the new dashboard view built into the new mobile-friendly user interface. Mobile browsers will automatically display this interface, but on a desktop browser, it can be accessed by selecting View and Mobile-Friendly. This particular meter defaults to the chart view, but today we'll be using the dashboard view. To switch to that view, use the menu in the top left corner, come down to View, and then Dashboard. This dashboard view is blank. Uh, it's saved, but there is no content at this point. So we're going to add each individual dashboard element one by one. So first, we'll come in to edit the dashboard. It has this pink bar up at the top of the page. To add a new element to the dashboard, click this button in the top left corner. And we can select from a list of available dashlets. You can use the drop-down menu to find more information on each dashlet, or simply click the plus sign to the left of the dashlet name to add it to the view. So we'll start with the chart. The chart is a fairly large dashlet. It works best with a large amount of space. So we'll stretch this out so it fills a little bit more space here. Next, we'll add a dial gauge. Now the dial gauge is fairly small. It doesn't take up a lot of space. And as you can see, as we drag and drop these items, elements of the view will shift to best accommodate them. We, of course, can scale this to desired. We'll make these two the same size just for consistency. Add a resource flow diagram. Pretty simple one now. A now table, which shows current values. The waveform view and the waveform view is also like the chart view in that it requires uh, quite a bit of space to be effective. So let's see about juggling some of these around. And finally, the summary table, which shows cumulative values for individual registers. So as you can see, it's fairly easy to resize these various elements. And once you've got a layout you're happy with, you can click the X in the top right corner, and that actually allows you to interact directly with these various elements. So for example, in our chart view, the chart's a little small. So we'll pull this down here, and let's add another register for the heat usage. That would probably be better with a different color, since red and red don't work very well together. So long press, we can come back and edit our line style. And we'll set this to black. Now, same thing for our waveform view. The waveform view doesn't display any information until it's actually started using this button down here. And we'll scale these amperages so that they fit nicely with their corresponding voltages. And we added two dial gauges earlier, so let's set one of these to track total heat. All these settings are explained in detail elsewhere. And same thing for these pages. Let's go ahead and add some heat usage. And we'll add a cumulative value for the heat usage as well. Now, the heat's not turned on right now, but there is electric heat at this site. So we'll see quite a large cumulative value in that since midnight period. So once you have your dashboard laid out in a uh, way that's intuitive and makes sense, you can come up to the top left corner here, select Dashboard, and actually Save. Now this one's already been saved as main, so we can just go ahead and overwrite that. And you'll notice that the pending mark up here disappears, showing that this is the latest version of this dashboard. So now we can always load this dashboard. Let's pull up the test dashboard. Not really much here, 
but we can pull up that main dashboard again at any time. And this kind of concludes a brief overview of how to use that dashboard functionality. Again, for additional information on the various elements used in the dashboard, various configuration options and what they mean, uh, see our knowledge base articles at kb.egage.net.